September 4th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 2 from the New Testament. First of all, then I urge that requests, prayers, intercessions, and thanks be offered on behalf of all people, even for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Such prayer for all is good and welcome before God our Savior, since he wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one intermediary between God and humanity, Christ Jesus, himself human who gave himself as a ransom for all, revealing God's purpose at his appointed time. For this I was appointed a preacher and apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying, and a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. So I want the men to pray in every place, lifting up holy hands without anger or dispute. Likewise, the women are to dress in suitable apparel, with modesty and self-control. Their adornment must not be with braided hair and gold or pearls or expensive clothing, but with good deeds, as is proper for women who profess reverence for God. A woman must learn quietly with all submissiveness. But I do not allow a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man. She must remain quiet, for Adam was formed first and then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, because she was fully deceived, fell into transgression. But she will be delivered through childbearing if she continues in faith and love and holiness with self-control. God, this... uh. This passage has actually taken me a while to work through. Um, Not because I have any problem with it, but because (laughs) I know other people have problems with this, with this chapter. So I was doing a lot of reading, a lot of talking to a couple of my pastors. Um, If anyone were to meet me, um, or you were to ask them to make a judgment about me, if I would have a problem with this passage, most, if they didn't truly know me, would say, yes, I'm strong, I'm independent. I've been on my own most of my life. And a lot of people think that the Christian woman of today struggles with submissiveness, struggles with the order of how you want things, God. Um, and I, I do wish that there was a different word for submissiveness because our society, our worldly society, has created that to be a bad word. Um, and how you mean it, it's it's not bad at all. It's It's what my... DNA was made for just like men's DNA was made for certain things. It is our role. In fact, you are the greatest creator of equality, much more so than the world that we currently live in. Um, I, I have no equality here in this world. You know, I run like a girl, I get paid like a girl, um, so many other things, uh, all having to do with how society has created that worldly equality um, to to make something that was in the Bible evil uh, so that they could use it and abuse it and have power um, over other people. However, in the Bible, um, that's, that's not ever what you are trying to say, um, that we have our places in your kingdom. Uh, we are all warriors for you. Uh, we all have very specific jobs that are common to both sexes to do, especially having to do with discipleship. However, you have created opportunities for men to do certain things, and you created them for that, and you created women for certain things, and you gave them uh, gifts to do those things. And so I've always struggled more with the worldly view <laughs> of, of this, of trying to take me out of my place, out of the the role that you created just for me, God. And so I have no problem with this chapter. I have no problem with me not teaching men. I have no problem with me specifically teaching women um, and children as it's commanded in the Bible. I have no problem with what you mean for submissiveness. Um, if 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 there is in the future a, a husband relationship that you want me to have, Uh, then that will come into play in even a greater way in that relationship with him being the head of the household. And I've been head of my household (laughs) for um, umpteen years, dozens and dozens of years. Um, And so that dynamic will shift. And with your strength and your guidance, that will happen in that household. 
but a lot of a lot of people do struggle with passages like this putting women in their place so to speak um, and god i just ask that everyone go back to what you are truly meaning in all of these passages um, our, our world has almost made an art form out of creating inequality between sexes between races between um different labels and titles that we have, financial inequality. And so women, a lot of women I know, tend to bristle at sentences or paragraphs or whole books that are about their, their particular place. But just like everything that you have given us, everything that you have created for us, it is always for the best. It is not to put us down, it is not to make us unequal, it is not to make us less than. In fact, you even say in the Bible, we're not less than men. We're just different and we have different roles. Uh, so first and foremost, God, I just pray for anyone who's bristling at what Paul is saying. Really take a look and, and realize that what you're bristling at is, is the world's interpretation of that being inequality um, that women have seemed to struggle with uh, here in the world that that's not what you're saying you're you're actually giving them a place very specific place in the world and in your kingdom of what you need them to do part of what Paul refers to is childbearing very important part of your kingdom um, women are also to, also to teach younger women women are to teach children women are to take care of households um, women um, can definitely have various pieces of of the ministries. I mean, you gave me this amazing ministry and I'm allowed to read your words and talk about my feelings about it. And that's crazy awesome because you've allowed me through my submission to do something like that. But again, keeping it in proper perspective, helping people, God, who are listening to this, who, who are really struggling with what Paul's saying because they're applying the worldview of equality and inequality, men and women, um, that seems to almost be ingrained in our life and in our society, that that's not what you're saying at all, that there's just certain gifts that you give each of us. Part two of this, um, and this is where I struggle, is... It's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult to find a church that matches all of my belief systems. And I suspect that's true, God, for everyone on this call. We all have a little bit different version of what everything says in the Bible, only because of our own filters, our own way of thinking things through things, our own way of seeing things because of things you've shown us. And I am very... Uh, black and white. Elders need to be men. Uh, pastors need to be men. Um, I really struggle because our church allows a, a woman to preach on Sundays. Now, once in a blue moon, like maybe a couple times a year. But I really struggle with that. Now, our church's explanation is they do it because she is doing it in submission um, with the full doctrinal approval of the elders who are all male. My church that I attend is the closest church I've ever found to being a biblically based church that they really look at what everything is said in the Bible and really take it to heart that, that everything is black and white. And so their version specifically of this chapter, specifically uh, verse 12, is they allow her to preach a couple times a year because she's doing it in submission, because she is doing it with the doctrinal approval of the elders uh, in our church. But me, I, I still have a problem with it. <laughs> I have nothing against her in the slightest. In fact, when she does preach, um, I always learn amazing things from her and I love that, but I'm also not a male. Um, she's, she's fully within her authority to teach me. Um, but in this particular verse, I struggle with the She's a woman and she's teaching men in our church, and which brings up part two. So part one is, God, I just pray for everyone who's bristling at this because they're taking on the worldly view of submission. Part two is to really understand and take responsibility for what you are being taught. What are you listening to? What is being taught to you? Does it match up to God's word? Um, and God, I just pray for everyone who is listening to this video today that they will question 
everything <laughs> that they will go back to your word constantly and say does this match up with what i'm being told does this match up to the church i go to does this match up to their doctrinal beliefs do i even know what their doctrinal beliefs are um, have i sat down and talked to my pastor about some of the things that i see in the bible and and what is really happening in our church you know i have people i know who are females who have made themselves pastors of churches and i know a lot of churches where the husband and wife are the lead pastors of the church and i i unless you ask me to do otherwise god i don't think i could ever go to a church like that because it would just drive me crazy it would really bother me going against what your word is and and that becomes a slippery slope right these aren't primary doctrines we've got to make sure that the church you're attending and the people who you're learning from the primary doctrine is solid uh, about salvation and who Jesus Christ is and the Trinity and those primary doctrines are black and white and th that's definitely where we should start this is definitely secondary doctrine and this is something that people argue with uh, argue over and about for since this the Bible came out or this particular chapter um, there's so many secondary doctrines um, and it shouldn't cause, in fact, you say that in the Bible, it shouldn't cause division in the church. Uh, but these are things that we've got to clear up. They can't be gray, murky areas in our faith. Um, and the main reason why is obviously to make sure that you're being taught good, solid doctrine. Just like Paul says, I am telling the truth. I am not lying. I am a preacher. I am an apostle, a teacher of the Gentiles and faith and truth. You've got to know who you're learning from. But part two of that, too, is because of the glorification of you, God. If a non-believer asks me questions about the Bible, and I, it's one of those gray, murky areas, and I don't have an answer for it, I, I can always say, I'm not sure, but I will find somebody who does and understand that process. But the less gray, murky areas that I have in my life, the more I learn about your word, the more I learn about you, God, the more opportunity I have to talk to people and not stop that conversation and say, can I get back to you because I know who to talk to, but I don't exactly have the answer. Now, I know I could, I could live a million lifetimes and never know everything that's in the Bible. But I do know that learning more and more about your word, being blessed with the daily video Bible project and, and getting to be in your word this much every single day getting to learn more about the relationship, it does give me an opportunity and a platform to talk to a lot of people about you. So God, first and foremost, I pray for people, um, specifically women, who you have given glorious, amazing gifts to. You have given me equality where society has not, where the world has not given them equality. Allow them to embrace the gifts that you've given them. Don't don't allow them to bristle at the things that you tell them not to do. You're simply creating complete boundaries for them. This is what the men do. This is what the women do. This is what you do together. It's not a bad thing. Uh, just allow them to learn about all the amazing splendor and gifts and gloriousness that you've given them as women. That they are not second class citizens by any stretch of the imagination. That you made all of us to be warriors for your kingdom. And then to help people who are in a situation where they may not completely know what their church teaches. Allow them to ask questions. Allow their church to be open to those questions. Allow them to feel comfortable and safe asking these questions. Allow them to learn more about your word and about their relationship with you. God, make them feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Going to a church where they don't fully understand what that church believes in. Allow them to know how important it is that who is speaking into their life and what is getting spoken into their life is so incredibly important. And they've got to know that it needs to match all up to your word. That what you do in our life never, ever contradicts anything in your word. And we've got to know that also about the churches we attend. God, I thank you for your faithfulness and allowing me to learn so much about your word. I am blessed to have so many people around me who continually teach me about your word, uh, including all of the gray areas and the nuances and the historical time and what was going on then. I just ask that they continue to teach others, just like Paul, that they are telling the truth and they have been appointed by you to be a preacher and an apostle. 
I truly appreciate that you have sent so many of those into my life. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Thank you.